Well, hi and welcome to ECC Teen Small Group Week for high school. I'm glad you decided to tune in online or you're watching this in your small groups, in which case you'll see me pop in uh, in a few minutes. But uh, I just wanted to welcome you guys and say a couple things about last week and a couple things about this week and then let you guys get rolling with um, with your evening. But to start off, I wanted to share something, um, you know, a question that you can talk about with the people around you, or if you're watching online, you can shoot your answers to me at dan at emmanuel.church. But um, are there any things that you love to enjoy that like shouldn't go well together or other people don't believe go well together? I, I was reminded of this at camp when um, me and another leader went up to get ketchup for our eggs. And some people are like, what? Ketchup for your eggs? That's horrible. And I was like, ketchup with my eggs, you have no idea, man. I like to put jelly on my hamburgers. I learned this from uh, going to a place that had a blue cheeseburger and they also put uh, apricot jam on it. And the combination was amazing. And I was like, oh, I actually like jelly on my burgers pretty much always. So uh, I'd love to hear your feedback on jelly and burgers, but also what is it for you? What's the weird food combination that you like that other people are like, oh, that's gross. And you're like, don't knock it till you tried it. So let me know what your answer is there. Um, other than that, uh, I just wanted to say a couple of things that I, I didn't want you to miss. The first is that um, you know last week we talked about how the Bible was written uh, for us, but not necessarily to us, how it was written uh, at a specific time to a specific people group. And we have to keep that in mind while we're reading it. Um, but I, I don't want you to get so caught up in that that you miss the fact that the Bible has something to say uh, to the people it was written to the day it was written, um, to the people in Jesus' day, as Jesus keeps going back to these passages in the Old Testament and Genesis, uh, Deuteronomy and elsewhere, and, uh, but also to us in the 21st century. And so while the Bible is an ancient book that was put together many years before you or I, it does have something special to say. And so as we look at uh, these connections between Jesus and Genesis today, I hope you see a little bit of that and, and try to actually dig in and, and ask the question, what does the Bible have to say to me today as well as to the ancient readers who heard it the first time? Um, the second thing I want to make sure you get is that what you study only deepens what you can see in the Bible. You know, last week we dug in and talked about how um, some of the science that we see in Scripture um, may be more coincidental uh, or more of a correlation. Like, oh, cool, that totally fits, but that's not the reason why this was written. Um, and, you know, they didn't know about modern science. And so if that's in there, that's totally God sneaking it in there uh, as a little... Easter egg for us 21st century readers rather than the main point of what's trying to be communicated. Um, and yet we can never find those Easter eggs. We can never see those things. And we can't understand the Bible uh, in every facet of life uh, unless we're learning in other areas of life. And so if you do go into science and are a scientist, you'll be able to catch the moments where the Bible totally is backing up science and, or backed up by science and see that. Or if you get into archaeology, you know, you can look at the stuff like that. But even just math or education or communication, whatever field you decide to go in, there are connections between the Bible and that field that make the Bible come to life to you different than it would to someone else. So I encourage you to talk that through with somebody either in your small groups tonight or uh, outside and, and let me know what you think. How can the Bible come more to life as people press into different fields? Uh, and I think almost all of them, there's a way that the Bible comes to life for you as you engage deeply uh, and learn and grow that it wouldn't have if you're doing something else. So that was number two. Number three is um, just a reminder that, man, if we can't visit the gym on the easy days to you know, build up strength and we have to lift something heavy, we're not going to be able to. And the Bible's the same way. If we can't commit to going to the Bible to learn on the days where we don't have a huge problem to tackle, then we're not going to have the muscles, the, the spiritual um the spiritual strength built up to get into the Bible to answer our questions when big questions arise. And so this is another reason why we're spending so much time in the Bible talking about the Bible this year, because it is essential for us to be able to answer the big questions of life, uh, both like theologically and socially, but also personally and interpersonally in your lives. Um, so I, I hope that your small group talks uh, a little bit tonight about memorizing scripture, a little bit tonight about what you guys are willing to be accountable to when it comes to getting into your scriptures and reading your Bible. Uh, and I hope you're willing to commit to something in those regards. 
Uh, and then number four is just going back to Genesis and Jesus. Um, the reminder for me and um, the spoiler, if uh, you don't know anything about your Bible, I believe that Genesis points us to John 3.16, that there is a huge connection between these two, right? Um, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, and I believe that the story of Genesis points us toward this, that God intentionally created the world and created us and chose to make a home for us um, out of this earth. And that starting with Adam and Eve, man, we have screwed it up royally time and time again. And yet the rest of the Bible continues to point toward God willing to sacrifice, God willing to do things to try to restore this relationship up to the point of actually coming and dying on a cross so that we would not face the wrath of our bad decisions, but instead would be able to get back to that perfection that he originally intended. And so again, I encourage you to think about that, to talk it over. How does Genesis point to John 3.16 in your mind, uh, or does it? And if you have thoughts, feel free to send them to me at danandemmanuel.church or talk them over with your parents or your small group leader or your friends, but I would love, love, love to hear about it. Other than that, I hope you spend some time getting into some passages in Genesis uh, that Jesus references or that are referenced in the Gospels, and you'll see those uh, in the description below. Other than that, no, I'm praying for you, and I love you, and if there's any way I can help, please reach out and let me know or come talk to me if you're at a youth group. Thanks, guys. See you later.